just need that boost that we all need every now and then. Sneak Energy got your back. Um, with the link down below, you will get a 10% discount in all your orders. So stay fuel and focus with Sneak Energy. It's honestly my secret weapon and can be your secret weapon as well. If you use the link down below, just remember link down below, 10% discount using my link. Now let's, let's get into the, the build, shall we? So let's dive into the part of the build because for the CPU, I'm going with my trusty AMD Ryzen 5 1600, no expectation. So it's a classic, but it's a serious CPU. And this was my first Ryzen CPU. It's still lying around here in the studio. So let's put it into the system. Yeah, six cores, 12 threads, and it's more than capable to 1080p and even 1440p gameplay. Um, here's the thing, at the price point that this came around, this is still a absolutely powerhouse of first generation Ryzen. But what is well, where is this Ryzen sitting on? So we got the ASUS Prime B350 Plus ATX motherboard, and it's okay. It, it's perfect for the build. It goes around. It was the board that I had paired with this CPU, and the board is straightforward. It's got all the ports that you need. Nothing super fancy, but it's reliable. It's on a stable CPU. And um, if you ask it, well, it, it do everything that need to do over here. But for cooler, I went with the Montec Metal DT24 base. So two tower pipe CPU cooler that it looks pretty decent as well. No RGB or nothing. And even when I'm pushing it during test gaming sessions, I, let me tell you, this is some satisfying and super easy to install. It's one of the easiest CPUs, coolers that I have found out, out there to install. But the temperatures are gonna be low, and um, the noise efficiency is going to be under control. No fancy cooler, no fancy water or nothing. I went with air on this one and it, it looks pretty clean to be honest if I said so. But for the RAM, well I went with some Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigabytes. So that's two 8 gigabytes RAM and that's DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And that, that cost me around like 40 quids. For storage, I decided to go with just a single PMY CS3240 one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. And well, I needed something fast. So this is one of the fastest SSDs that I have laying around. Load times are perfect. And basically no more waiting forever for games with fire to load. So this drive just gets it done. So PCA4, as I said, and for this prime, it's just, it's just like a dream. One terabyte is plenty for some gaming. And if I need a little bit more, yeah, you got, I got SATA connectors on the boards, or I can even use one of the other PCI connectors to put a expansion card for more NVMe SSDs. Unfortunately, this board only got one slot for NVMe SSD, and that is being used for this one terabyte. That is gonna host the system and also some games. But now, where it get really exciting is, the card, because I have this Radeon RX 1700, eight gigabytes laying around. And it is the heart of the system, to be honest. I couldn't be happier with this. It's super optimized for 1080p, but it can even be pushed at 1440p, pretty comfortable as well. When I put this thing like, you know, we need a setup, I need something that performs well for gaming and the RX 1700. But for the power, well, I went with all out, to be honest. I have several options here in the studio and I decided to go with 1000 watt Titan Gold Montec power supply. 80 plus gold certificate and fully modern ATX. So you might think 1000 watts is overkill, but I wanted to A, few to prove it. B is the only thing that I have laying around, to be honest, and it's modular, so I'm using just the right cables that I need. And the cables are in black, they are pre sleeved some of them, so it looks pretty clean inside, well, the case over here. And the case is, again, a Monte King 95 Pro. It looks incredible. It's your typical fish tank glass all around with some mesh and everything. And the airflow on this is incredible because it's using reverse fans on the bottom. So we've got three 120 millimeter reverse fans at the bottom. So that's sucking air from the bottom straight to the system. And then we've got two 140 millimeters at the back. So the whole back is perforated as well. And it's pushing air inside the system. It's doing the whole thing that needs to do. Air is 
blowing nicely through the top and being structured with another rear fan at the back. And the fans, they come pre-installed. They are perfect fans and they are fully RGB. You can set it up with five pin RGB to your motherboard. This motherboard would not have RGB. So I just set it up to the reset button and you can just cycle around and go all the colors that you really want to. So purple, why not? But the moment of truth, let's talk about performance because I went into, well, high hopes, but the results honestly blew me up. In Cyberpunk 2077, that is, well, the benchmark of choice right now for gamers, it maxed out, uh, max out the Certi 10 on SR 2.1. Um, honestly, I was impressed. I was getting an average of 73 FPS and a peak of 99 frames. So that is an ultra setting. Um, mind you, it was so smooth that it could completely give you a completely different experience, to be honest. Like from other machines playing Cyberpunk, it, it, it ran so nice just at 1080p on this machine. But Forza Horizon 5 on my simulator, I decided to run it all stream settings and I got an average of 67 frames and I top it up with around like 94 frames. Everything turned on, completely everything. So every car, every detail was perfect, clean, smooth, and even in the rain. Formula One 2022 uh, didn't miss a beat, honestly. Like 73 FPS in average and reaching around like 90 frames in silver storm and water, total immersion with the racing scene. And then in some other type of story games like Race of the Tomb Raider on high setting, I was pulling around, honestly, 105 frames in this machine. That is sub a thousand pounds with the maximum frames of 193 on 1080p so the smoothness details and the ability to experience those well visuals on this machine i couldn't believe that this honestly this build with this cpu that's first gen ryzen 16 gigabytes of ddr4 memory um yes okay the graphics card is a little bit more more than 7600 it was pulling this graphics so nicely and um, honestly from stuff like this like i have laying on the shelf over here to get a full functional PC that can be playing games and honestly I'm gonna move it behind the racing sim. I still need to show you the racing sim guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification if you want to well be one of the first ones to see my racing sim build and this computer will be in that racing sim but yeah nevertheless thanks for watching guys don't forget to drink sneak energy if you're looking for a perfect boost whatsoever, link will be down below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me in everywhere, I'm Secotech, and I will see you in the next one. Adios.